Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. So, due to the popularity of the last video and basically everyone asking me to do a follow-up on the top 20 best vehicles, I just had to do it. So I don't want this channel to become a list channel, so this will be the last one for a while, but I will put them in in between other reviews and other little things I'm doing, just as a bit of fun really and a little bit of a break. So, like the other list, this is just my opinion. These are the vehicles that I think perform the best in the game, not necessarily fundamentally the best vehicles. And a little bit unlike the last list, the vehicles in this one are a little bit interchangeable, so the tanker number 17 could equally be swapped out for the tanker number 13 without really ruining the integrity of the list itself. So most of the vehicles aren't necessarily better than each other until we start getting into the top 10. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy the list and keep your eyes and ears out for a couple of friends I've enlisted to help on this list too. I really hope you enjoy. Number 20. So starting off, we have the Ho Reproduction. And this was a, a bit of a tricky choice for number 20. There were loads of tanks that could have filled this role very easily. Uh, but after talking to a few people, eventually did settle on this one. So at 7.0, it's got quite a lot going for it. It's got a fantastic gun, 105mm, with a 9.1 second reload on Expert, uh, which is pretty good. It's on par with quite a few of the other vehicles you're going to be seeing. And the damage the gun puts out is definitely worth the reload. It's a pretty reliable one-shot machine. Despite, however, being an APHE round, meaning it does lose a little bit of penetration on slope surfaces, but it isn't really much of a substantial problem. It doesn't really hinder the tank much. It's uh, very quick as well. It matches pretty much all medium tanks in speed and even some light tanks as well. This tank is a little bit of a subversion, actually, to uh, most uh, tank destroyers in that most of them only have one good thing going for them, either really good armour, really good gun, or really good mobility. This one pretty much has all three. The armor's great, the armor's pretty reliable, it's very, very quick and got a very good gun, so, so it really stands out in that regard uh, for being a casemate. So obviously it doesn't have a turret, so it can't really look around and have that extra level of versatility, but for what it is, you know, as a sniper, as you know, you can even use it as a flanker if you're mad enough, and it does work really well in pretty much any situation you put it in. And for a tank to really be fantastic, you're going to need one that's reliable and versatile, and this one, despite being a casemate tank destroyer, actually does tick those boxes. The main downside for this thing really is that it doesn't have much of a fallback if it gets taken out. The Japanese 7.0 lineup is uh, quite limited in that it only contains this. So you're going to be relying on 6.7s, and the 6.7s Japan gets aren't really fantastic anyway. So on that basis, it's going to be sticking at number 20. Number 19. Next up is the T-32, the American 7.0 heavy tank. So the armor on this one is so good that there are very few tanks at the tier that can reliably penetrate it. And there are weak spots, of course. There's uh, the lip on the top of the turret, the machine gun port, and the lower plate. This isn't really much of a problem, though, in that anything the T-32 meets is likely going to have to stop and take quite precise aim to get a penetrating hit, while the T-32 would have likely already one-shot them. Speaking of, the gun is very good, it's very, very damaging. It's got about 200mm of penetration on the APHE round, which is what everyone's mainly going to be using it for. Uh, it is let a little bit down by the reload, but even so, combined with the armour and the mobility, it really just is a fantastic vehicle with very few downsides. For a heavy tank, the mobility is actually quite good. It keeps pace with quite a few medium tanks, actually, which means it can easily get to the front lines and really put the pressure on early game when it's only really going to be meeting light and medium vehicles which have no real hope of penning it at all, meaning it can find a good spot early and dig itself in before the heavy tanks that actually pose a threat to it can even get close. The T-32 also performs surprisingly well in an up tier, there are quite a few 7.7 vehicles that struggle to get through the armour as well. Mainly the Russian tanks, as the APHE really does struggle with the T-32's armour, and even if it's hull down, there are quite a few other tanks with Sabo that still struggle as well, as the mantlet is about 300mm thick, meaning that there's not really many rounds at all at 7.0 that can reliably go through it. Overall, the T-32 is a fantastic versatile brawler that practically any tank is going to struggle to take out. Number 18. Next up is the ever-popular T-29, another American heavy tank at 6.7. So this one is practically good at everything. It's got, again, like the T-32, good mobility, good armor, and a great gun. 
Uh, and being at 6.7, it means that it's going to meet things like the Tiger 1, uh, the Panthers, like things that can't really penetrate it anywhere unless they hit the lower plate. Uh, combined with the staggering one-shot potential of the gun makes it for quite a dangerous vehicle. The reload experted clocks in around 13 seconds, which for the power the gun has is really, really worth it. Uh, it's unlikely that you're going to penetrate anything and not one-shot it just because of how powerful the gun is. It also gets a very good capped AP round as well, which can easily go through the turret of the Maus, uh, the T-54, and it can even give the IS-4M a bit of trouble as well. So overall, you're not really going to be meeting anything on the battlefield that you're not going to be able to penetrate, and if you can't use the APHE, you are going to be able to disable them with the AP. The other benefit it has is having quite spread out crew. So even if you are up tiered and you are fighting things with heat like the Leo-1, it's not really very easy to one-shot at all, so if they're aiming for the hull, they're likely only be taking out the driver, machine gun, or maybe one of the turret crew. If they're going for the turret, they're only really going to be taking out two of the six crew, which makes it really hard to um, take out quite reliably, even with heat. So in an up tier, although it's probably going to get disabled, so it's going to get the breach taken out quite a lot, it's not going to get one shot. And it has quite a good reverse gear as well, meaning you can get out of those situations. Overall, it's a really forgiving tank that works well basically everywhere. Number 17. Next up is the Chi To, one of the few Japanese tanks that actually is quite exceptional. The mobility is good, the armor is pretty trolly, uh, but the real gem of this tank comes in the gun. The upgraded round gives you about 150 millimeters of penetration, and this is at 4.3, so there isn't really anything at all that's going to give you any trouble. You can pen the side of the Jumbo's turret, or you can even pen the Churchill Mark 7 if you're close enough. Meaning that there's only, you know, a real handful of tanks that you're going to struggle to pen. Like, with everything else, you can just, you know, go centre mass and you will one-shot them because the gun as well has a lot of filler. So, most of the tanks you're going to be seeing, like uh, the Shermans, T-34s, it's going to cut through them like butter. The armour itself as well is quite bouncy, despite only being about 75mm. There's a lot of spots on the tank that aren't really going to merit a good penetration from most other shells. The American Short 75 struggles quite a bit, most of the early British guns do as well. So you are going to be able to brawl a little bit with this tank. The only drawback really is that its reload is comparatively quite long. So it is a little bit longer than most of the mid-caliber guns you're going to be seeing uh, for all of the other nations, but when you take into account the sheer power of the gun itself, it really doesn't matter. Because if you do penetrate, you are pretty much guaranteed to knock the tank out. It's really that powerful. And really does breathe a little bit of life back into the Japanese tree. Number 16. Next up is the German Sherman, which is quite a rare vehicle actually, and that itself does tie into why the vehicle performs so well. Uh, it does have that little bit of rare factor, so when people immediately encounter it, they might not actually know that it exists. Um, certainly when I've been playing, I do come across people who've never seen the tank before. But the main thing is that um, it's in the German tree. And what made the American M4A2 in the tech tree so sort of average is that it does fight the German guns, so its armour isn't really that reliable. But when you take the German guns out of the equation, it's very, very good, and especially because you're also going to be fighting Americans and British, who have never really needed to fight a Sherman with their guns before, so they're not going to know what to do. And if you practice, you can learn the weak spot, so there's a little bit of armour on the turret that's a bit weaker to take into account the electric turret drive, and that's a spot that can easily one-shot the tank with the German Sherman if you're fighting other Shermans. So the only real drawback the main Sherman had is gone, which makes this one a fantastic brawling tank. If you angle slightly, the Russian 76mm gun can't pen you really anywhere unless it hits the turret weak spot. The American 75 again can't pen you anywhere unless it hits the weak spot. And since the players using these tanks aren't really going to be thinking of that weak spot, they're just going to go for your front plate and your turret and they're really going to struggle to take you out. So taking into account the damaging gun, the good mobility and the reliable armour, combined with the heavy hitting power of the German teams, it really does make this vehicle stand out quite a lot. Number 15. The last thing you'd want in your German 5-7 lineup is the- <coughs> Oh god. Oof, don't know what came over me. Back on track. Next we have the Ersatz M10, which is arguably the best standard Panther in the game. 
So what we've really got is the Panther G hull with the Panther G turret, which is missing the uh, the chin extra bit of armor. So it does basically have the armor model of a standard Panther D or A, but with the extra side armor of the G, meaning that the overmatches can be a little bit harder to get on other tanks. So you can angle a little bit more if you need to. On top of that, you do have the very small extra bit of armor as well that comes on as the package to make it look like the American M10 tank destroyer which means it does have added protection against higher caliber HE and uh, even HESH rounds if you are fighting tanks with HESH, which isn't really going to happen very much anyway. But you do have the very good mobility, the very good turret traverse, and the very good gun, all at 5.7. And the reason for this is, um, in the way Gaijin balances things, is because it doesn't get APCR. So the Panther G and the Panther A at 6.0 both get APCR, this one doesn't. So th that's why it's a 5.7. And with all of the extra things it has at the tier, it really does make it stand out, especially for how versatile the German 5.7 lineup is anyway. Now you could argue that the Russian captured T5 Panther A is better, because that is as well at 5.7, gets a quicker turret traverse, and fights German tanks. But I still think the Ersatz is the better option, because it does go very nicely with the German 5.7 lineup, and it does get the extra side armor as well, which really does help against things like Pershings, uh, T-3485s. It can stop the overmatch from those rounds, which does make it a really good brawling tank, and a sniper basically does anything you want it to, really. Number 14. Next up is the T-20, the American 5.0 medium tank, and this one just excels at everything basically it's just fundamentally a 10 out of 10 vehicle it does everything well it's got really good mobility really good gun and really good armor and especially for a medium tank the armor is really really good um, it's about 88 millimeters on the turret and the front plate the front plate is sloped meaning that it's about 100 millimeters effective so things like the um, Russian 76 can't really touch you uh, and in a down tier there are loads of guns that really really struggle to take this tank out the turret itself is very small and it's got quite a few inconsistencies with the armor so it's not a flat 88mm. There's quite a few bumps and inconsistencies with the armor meaning there's still quite a high chance you will bounce quite a few shots off of it. It's also quite hard to one shot as well especially through the turret because it is quite small. So any shot going into it and destroying it will probably not take out the machine gunner and the driver meaning you can use the excellent reverse speed to back out of the situation, repair and then come back. The ammo as well is all stored uh, sporadically in the hull of the tank, so again, hitting the ammo is quite a chore in itself. It also gets the short stabilizer, so reactionary shots are quite easy with it as well. The best thing really about this tank is that it has an advantage over pretty much every other vehicle in some way. If it's a heavy tank, you can use the mobility. Uh, if it's a lighter tank with a weaker gun, you know, you're basically untouchable. If you're fighting a, another light tank, you know, you can use the short stabilizer to take them out before they can take you out. It just works so well against basically everything, and it's so versatile that it just had to be on this list. Number 13. Next up is the M8A1, another pretty rare vehicle. This one sits at 2.7, has amazing mobility, and has the 75mm gun found on the Shermans at 2.7, meaning that there's basically nothing you're going to struggle taking out. Even if you're in an up tier, you know, against Panzer IVs, you can as well take them out with the gun quite easily. And combined with mobility, you have what a lot of people refer to this tank as, as a baby Hellcat. It really does perform pretty similarly. The only thing it lacks um, that brings the tank down a margin is its lack of turret traverse. It's quite slow. But it doesn't really matter because you are so mobile, you can easily swing the hull around to get your gun on target. It doesn't pose too much of a problem. Also, the gunner does the job of the commander and the loader in that it fires the 50 cal and reloads the gun. So if you do lose your commander and you do lose your machine gunner, you're down to two crew, you still get the, the same reload and you can still use the 50 cal, which at the tier is actually really, really powerful because you're still going to be facing things like flak panzers, uh, BT-7s, things you can take out with the 50. So if you are on reload, you can still use the 50 to really do some damage with this vehicle. The 75mm at 2.7 is just so overwhelmingly powerful compared to basically all the other guns you're going to be fighting. It's going to be one-shotting pretty much everything you're going to fight, and considering as well you're probably going to be facing reserve tanks when people respawn as well. You're just such an overwhelmingly powerful vehicle on the battlefield, combining the mobility and the gun. This one really is one of the best. Number 12. 
Next is the T-54 model 1947. Uh, despite being the earliest of the T-54 models in game, this one definitely is the best one. It does lack the heat and the Sabo that the 1949 and the 51 get, but those rounds are so rarely used anyway that it doesn't really matter very much. Uh, the advantage you have with this model is that it has an extra 20mm of armour on the front plate, meaning that things like the Mauser's 128mm can't pen it, and even the 105 Sabo struggles to pen the front plate as well. The turret is also arguably better as well. Uh, it's a little bit harder to actually penetrate, despite having a little bit less armour um, than the other ones comparatively. Uh, it's 200 on the front on the actual mantlet, but it also has a 50mm plate behind the mantlet that covers uh, the edge, which a lot of people don't actually know about, so you know, it makes aiming for the turret even harder because if you aim close to the middle uh, by the gun, you have a danger of hitting the bits that are sloped outwards towards the gun, which you're not going to penetrate, and if you aim too far outwards, you're going to hit the overlapping part with the mantlet. So it's a really, really hard tank to pen, especially with APHE. There are a few APHE rounds, uh, if any, that can reliably go through this one. The only way uh, that's a reliable kill is to go for the Coppola with APHE, but again, that's easier said than done, because if you're at range, you know, the chance of hitting quite a small target like that are pretty low. Uh, as well as the other aspects of the tank, it's got a very good gun. It has the 100mm um, with a 91 second reload. If you're using the capped APHE round, there's not really very many tanks you're going to struggle to take out. It uh, really chews through things like Leopard, Centurions. There's not a lot that this one really struggles with. Mobility-wise as well, it is very good. Pretty much average about what you're going to be seeing at the tier. It works in all situations and it's just a really good jack-of-all-trades, really. Number 11. Next up is the Panzer IV F2, the first long barrel Panzer IV for Germany. And the reason why I'm picking this one as opposed to the Panzer IV G is that this one is just so dominant at its BR. It does lack the extra 30mm of armour on the front plate and the extra turret traverse that the G gets, but it does sit at 0.7 below in BR, so it's not going to get up to to see things like Jumbos, Churchills. It's going to have a much better time in the matchmaker, and at a 3.3 down tier, it's going to be bullying tanks like Stuarts and T-50s, things that don't really stand the chance with it. The armour on the Panzer IVs isn't something that really matters very much anyway, they're not really known for their armour, but mainly the gun, and at the tier, this gun is amazing. Uh, coupled with the turret, uh, the decent reload, it really, really puts the pressure on in a down tier, and even works basically exactly the same in an up tier as well. This tank does work up to BRs of, you know, even about 5.0, so it's performing constantly. I mean, you can keep it in lineups and use it as a reserve. It's constantly going to be as effective as it is at 3.3. This one's gun and mobility are just so overwhelmingly potent at the tier. This Panzer IV, at least relative to the BR, is definitely the best one. Number 10. What happens when you combine a fast autoloader, a stabilizer, maneuverability, and also speed? Well, you get yourself the bane of rank 5. It is the Object 906. This Soviet vehicle wasn't anything special until the mechanic of a stabilizer was added to the game, and then it became a powerhouse. Only to be added to this was the fact that it was able to get scouting, and therefore the airstrike, and improved optics modification. Over the last year, the Object 906 has been given some buffs, as I said, in the form of the stabilizer, and also some nerfs from a gameplay point of view. Being put up to rank 6 and battle rating 8.0 means that it's kind of more on its own now when before it was around the 7.3 BR. What made it so powerful is that you could run it with the Yak-23 back in the day. You could also run it with the IS-6, and you could run it with the T-54s, and being up tiered in the 906 was no issue. Nowadays, at around about 8.0, if you are up tiered, you're going to have to use it as a scout, instead of before, it was used much more as a pseudo-fast medium tank. It does also have hull brake to it, but sometimes the hull brake is a little bit iffy on how it works, but overall, what you have out of this machine is the best 85 in the game, 
a wonderful stock grind because you get the BR372 as stock and then the heat FS to back it up. And even if you're outmatched, even if you can't attack the enemies on equal ground, you still have the scouting ability to be able to make sure that your allies around you are able to take them out for you. I've been the European Canadian, I'll see you next time. Number 9. Next we have the M4A3 E2 Jumbo. This is the 75mm variant at 4.7 in the American and French tree. The reason why this tank is so dangerous is that it completely negates guns that it can face. There are certain tanks around the bracket of 4.7, either way really, that can't penetrate it frontally unless they hit really specific weak spots. Meaning that there are certain vehicles on the team that if they meet this vehicle and are unable to flank it, there's nothing they can really do, especially while there's a jumbo rolling towards them. And again, like some other vehicles that have very good armor, when this tank is driving towards somebody, they have a very small amount of time to either go for the cupola, the machine gun port, or the barrel. And while the jumbo's on the move, it's not really very likely you're going to hit that crucial spot. So this vehicle, if played well, there's nothing players can really do. I mean, uh, some people have a tendency to over-angle it so that people can penetrate and overmatch the track into the side. That usually takes the tank out. But playing this correctly and not angling it very much, because the front plate, let's be honest, is basically immune to everything at 4.7, apart from a couple of things like the Dicamax and the SCO85, a few things like that that can sometimes go through it. The armor's pretty much impenetrable from the vast majority of guns. For the Jumbo's gun itself, it still does work, especially because when you're going up against things, even in an up tier, they're likely not going to take you out in one shot or even penetrate you in one shot. So your reload is very quick. It's about 5 seconds aced, so about 5.3 experted. So you can probably fire about 3 shots for everyone else's two. So even though your gun isn't that powerful, you do have the time and the safety to pick out weak spots in the jumbo that other tanks can't really do. There are several tanks better than this one, but this might be one of the safest vehicles to play in the game. Number 8 Hey everybody, my name is Ragfang, and I've been creating War Thunder related content on YouTube for about a year now, and I've been playing the game for uh, about 4-5 or five years. So to crack on, what is the SD KFZ-234, or the Sonderkraftfahrzeug if we want to use the German pronunciation, or the Packwagon if we want to go with the War Thunder version, a good tank? Well, that 75mm Pack 40 gun sticks out like a giant cherry on top of a small cake. With 146mm of penetration at 100m, on a flat angle at least, you're going to punch through almost anything you may face at the battle rating of 3.0 or 4.0 in the case of an up tier. The gun's reload isn't too bad either, at 7.6 seconds. The pack wagon is incredibly fast too. With a 210 horsepower engine and only weighing in at 11.7 tons, this thing can run circles around all most heavies and perhaps even medium tanks at its tier. This tank's speed, which is 90 km an hour according to the stat sheet, can be a problem though, as anybody who's driven the standard Puma will know. The 8 wheel steering can make handling, hmm, tricky at high speeds. What I mean by this is that at high speeds the Puma has this really bad thing where it just wobbles and shakes all over the place and it's hard to keep it in a straight line. This can cause issues, but generally speaking being a TD you're just going to park this thing up somewhere and set the range that you're shooting at and prepare for enemy tanks to come to you. Having only 30mm of armour at the front of the hull isn't fantastic either, but you've got to try your best not to get, sp not to get spotted and to only go in guns blazing when it's absolutely safe to do so, which this tank is more than capable of doing, I might add. All in all, I adore this tank. It's fast, agile, and packs a great gun for its tier. To my mind, a great tank must also be fun, and the pack wagon gives you that in spades. Number 7 Next is the Chinu 2. This is the 3.7 Japanese premium vehicle, and it's basically a Cheeto, but with slightly less armor at uh, 3.7, so it's, uh, it doesn't get up tiered as much. And in that regard, tier for tier, this tank has one of the most powerful destructive guns anywhere in the game. So this gun has about 155 millimeters of penetration at 100 meters at 3.7. So there's practically nothing at all that gives this tank any trouble in regards to armor. You can penetrate everything, and because of the destructive power of the gun, 
you're likely going to one-shot everything as well. The gun is also really easy to aim, it's got quite high velocity, so you can just sit back at range, uh, put your turret over a hill and just snipe people, because if you hit, you're going to take them out. And same with the Cheeto as well, the armour this thing has is a little bit trolly. Uh, the sides and the front plate bounce quite a lot, the turret bounces quite a lot as well. And it's quite difficult to one-shot, especially with solid shot, as the, the gunner and the driver sit on opposite sides, so you're not really going to be disabled in terms of your ability to drive and your ability to shoot at the same time, which really, really helps. Also, it wouldn't be fair to not mention how good of a premium this thing is. It's 3.7, but in tier 3, and it's one of the vehicles that's good in basically any situation where you put it. It's good at long range, it's good at close range, it's good in between. There's not much this vehicle can't do. So, and for a, quite a low price as well, it's not um, it's not an expensive premium. It's probably one of the best premiums in the game as well, tier for tier. So, as a product and as a vehicle, you can't really go wrong with this one. It will work everywhere. Number six. What's up guys, Rotorhead here. If you guys don't know me, I am a member of G-Squad and you guys can catch me pretty much almost daily on Twitch. I was very excited to be invited to get in on the 20 tanks video. I was even more excited to get one of the easy tanks, <laughs> which was the 40T. Uh, it's one of my most played French tanks. Uh, 40T was designed to be a more lightweight variant of the overweight AMX 50. Uh, you can see this by the rubber road wheels and the 40 millimeters less on the hull. Uh, 40T features only about 40 millimeters all the way around. Um, it features an 8 round autoloader, which consists of 1 round in the breech and 7 rounds in a drum magazine that you can actually see below the turret. So while you're in game you can hit your x-ray view and you actually see how many rounds you have left before it's depleted. You want to manage this because if you run it dry you have roughly a 25 second reload for 1 round and a 2 minute and 25 second reload to reload all 8 rounds. Um, for a BR 6.7 tier 4 vehicle this is probably the easiest stock grind in the game um, just from the get-go this is a very easy vehicle to play um, it's very easy to get into advantageous positions early game and use that four second reload to dispatch multiple enemies at once uh, it's also easy to brawl in close quarters even though you have a lack of armor with that four second reload you it's easy to juggle um, multiple enemies at once um, but I think all things considered, um, this is definitely belongs in a list of the best tanks in the game. Number 5. Next is the T-34-1942, and tier for tier, this is probably the best T-34 the Russians actually get. It's 3.7 and has a huge amount of positives going for it. It's got quite bouncy armor, it's got a bouncy turret, it's mobile, got a fantastic gun, lots of versatility options. And it has something over pretty much every other 76mm T-34. Uh, the turret armor is pretty much the best out of all of them. It's very bouncy, it's got uh, cheeks that overlap the main turret armor, so nothing's really going to go through that very easily. It does have the neck of the turret, which is quite exposed and quite an easy penetrating shot, but it's honestly quite unlikely to hit it. Um, the top of the turret usually catches the shot anyway. It also has a quicker reload than all the other 76mm T-34s because it gets the, uh, the modern turret. So it's 6.5 seconds aced instead of 6.9, which the other T-34s get. Um, and just against other vehicles, it's, it's just very easy. It's a really easy vehicle to play. Uh, you don't really need to account for much in terms of positioning. Your gun works at range, it works against angle targets, uh, it works at close range, mid-range. It's, it's hard to really put this tank in a spot where it doesn't work. It's also a vehicle that can be incredibly aggressive. Uh, rushing at people uh, that you're going to be fighting tanks that don't quite have the penetrating power to reliably penetrate you anywhere like things with the uh, 17 pounder the german 75 these are things that you will run into but you'll also run into a lot of vehicles that can't do that the american 75 as well uh, if you're running around a corner angled you're going to get a shot off on them before they can get a shot off on you your gun is very very potent and very good at penetrating angles it's got absolutely everything going for it. The only negative really is that it doesn't have much gun depression, but that's very easily countered in where you put the vehicle. And at 3.7, you're rarely going to meet things you're going to have much trouble with. So this one really is just a breeze to play. Number four. 
Next we have the infamous Whirlwind, and this is a vehicle that, to be honest, does not belong where it sits at 3.7. This one could honestly be about 5.0, 5.3, 5.7. It's, it's just too good where it is. It's one of the best AAs in the game, tier for tier anyway, until he gets a radar AA. And against tanks at 3.7, it can be absolutely filthy. It has a very low spawn cost. It has HVAP rounds, which is 65mm of pen at close range. It has four guns, reloads pretty quick for the amount of guns it has. And it can just devastate uh, actual vehicles, which it shouldn't really be able to do, as the spawn cost is really, really low. It's also a very easy AA to use as well. It's quite easy to lead, and it absolutely devastates planes that it hits, especially low, slow-moving planes. This one does really, really well. It doesn't have the long-range accuracy and effect that the Ostwind has, but at close range, nothing's really going to get away with the Whirlwind. It's really easy to just pick up and use, even if you're not very good at AA. It's just way too good where it is, especially against actual tanks. It has an edge over other AA as well, as it can't get hull broken. It's very good at fighting other AA, because um, you know it has 80 millimeters of armor on the front, and you know if you're rolling around the corner against an AA, they're likely not going to hit you before your flurry of 20 millimeters are shredding them out. And it's also quite hard to take out as a plane as well, as it does have armor on the turret, not very much. But if you are flying right at a whirlwind, there's not really much of a chance you're going to get out unscathed. As opposed to other single barrel AA that are a little bit harder to hit planes with, even head on. So this one is just a real menace for everyone really against tanks, planes. It's just way too good where it is to be honest, it doesn't deserve the BR it gets. So, love using it or hate fighting it, it has to be on this list. Number 3. Next is the best T-34 in the game, the German T-34 1942-747. This one gets all the best aspects of every T-34 that is 76mm uh, at all. So it gets the quicker reload and the good turret of the 1942, and it gets the front armour of the STZ E T-34 as well. So protection-wise, this is the best T-34, uh, hands down. Also, it's in the German tree, meaning it doesn't face the high-penning German guns. So it has another aspect of protection on top of it as well. It's only going to face um, you know, the Americans, the British, the Russians, and they all struggle a little bit more with the armor, especially the um, the Americans. So it's just a bit silly that the, uh, the best T-34 isn't even in the Russian tree. But still, what can you do? So this tank adds a lot to the German 4.0 lineup. Uh, as most of the other tanks are quite slow, don't really have a lot of armor. They're not—they're not really that versatile. They're more snipey, glass cannon kind of vehicles. This one adds a whole new dynamic to the lineups and allows for a lot more versatility for German 4.0, which, to be honest, is probably the best lineup in the game, uh, at least for effective vehicles. Even though it's got a slightly higher BR than the 1942 in the Russian tree. It's still incredibly effective. It's got an incredibly potent gun. Same other things, really. It's really quick, really good armor um, for what it is anyway as a medium tank. It's just a very difficult vehicle to fight against, and it rounds off the German 4.0 lineup very, very, very well. Number two. Next, again, is the German captured KV-1B. So this is basically a KV-1E uh, for Russia, which you could buy uh, as a bundle vehicle but it's in the German tree, and much like the T-34, it's good for the same reasons. It doesn't face the German guns, and it's fighting vehicles that have a really, really tough time penning it. This tank is so heavily armoured, and the main reason why the Russian KV-1E isn't in this list is because it faces the German guns and doesn't have a very good time in facing them. But the KV-1B, at the same BR, is going to be fighting T-34s, KV-1s, Shermans, Cromwells, and if this tank is slightly angled, turret as well, it is completely immune from these guns, ultimately. Granted, its gun isn't that potent, it's not doesn't have a lot of penetration, but uh, it sort of functions like a, a pseudo Hesh round because of the fuse on the gun, so you can pen very, very extreme angles with it. So it's very, very good in that regard as well. Like What it lacks in pen, it makes up for in damage. And... Again, 4.0 German tank, it rounds off the lineup incredibly well, and this probably is the second best heavy tank in the game. You all know what's coming for number one. Number one. 
Right, no prizes for guessing this one. Everyone knew it was going to be this. The KV220. What a absolute monster this vehicle is. Basically, second to none, tier for tier. Its gun is very reliable and its mobility for a heavy tank is absolutely incredible. This tank can solo entire teams on its own genuinely, that sounds like a very silly thing to say, but this tank can do it, it's that good. The turret armour is, on the surface, not as amazing as you'd expect, it's about 90mm, but anything that goes right through that mantlet is going to take out the breach and nothing else, and the tank is going to be able to reverse away, repair, and come right back and annihilate anything in its path. The T20 just shrugs off any gun, really. The American 90, the German 88, the 17-pounder. If it's angled, there's not much that can really get through this one whatsoever. And like other tanks that are quite mobile heavies, like the Jumbo, this thing can just roll right towards anyone. They're going to bounce. You're going to repent. It's, it's just such a filthy tank, really, at 5.7. To think this was 5.3 when it first came out for the first Operation Summer event. And speaking of, this is a gift vehicle, it's unobtainable. And that makes it even more dangerous in that most players either don't know what it is or don't see it enough to know where to reliably shoot it as it's not in the hangar. They can't use the protection analysis module to actually see how to take it out. And the chances are, if this thing is down-tiered, you're going to be playing something that can't really pen it frontally anyway. Um, you can annoy it, you can hassle it, but the crew are so spread out, it's so mobile, taking it out is a massive chore. Um, you're going to have to resort to things like the Dicker Max, the Long 88, things that have a bit more of an easy time taking it out. But even so, this one is just, to sum it up in one word, it's a monster. So, there we are guys. Really hope you enjoyed the list. Again, sorry for the wait, I've had so much building work on and it's just buzz saws and things during the day, so it has taken quite a while. Um, I do want to say a very big thank you to the European Canadian, Rotorhead and Redfang for helping with this list. Please, please check them out. They're all very good. If I didn't include a vehicle you think should be in this list, uh, let me know what it is. I'd like to see what other people um, agree and disagree with, as, you know, this list isn't fundamentally right. It's just my opinion, really. Anyway, so thank you all very much for watching. The next video I'm planning might take uh, quite a long time, so please forgive the wait. I know these usually have quite a wait anyway, but this one might be a little bit longer, but hopefully it'll be worth it. Hopefully it'll help a few people out, and I really hope you enjoy it, and I really hope you enjoyed this video too. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.